All right, good afternoon, class, and welcome to week number five. That is right, week number five of your 9410 class, which is your cultural heritage seminar. As always, I am your professor, Dr. J.S.K. Alston. And what we will do this week is we will uh, just do a very quick state of the course update because there isn't much to talk about with the state of the course right now because things are going very well. And then from there, I'm going to soapbox a little bit about the... Um, about intangible heritage uh in general but specifically i'm going to talk about games uh which is a games are a form of intangible heritage that i really wish that i could devote a entire module to but um i've reviewed the 15 modules of course that we have in this course and i do think that the 15 modules that we already have are the necessary ones i did not find one that could be replaced with uh a module about games and also rituals and so i just decided i would talk very briefly about it here um this one we're gonna keep definitely under 20 minutes possibly even around the 15 minute mark and i know i say that a lot for those of you who have had me <laughs> i do say that a lot but um there's just not really much of a reason to uh talk very long in this check-in video because again things are going so well uh first of all thank you for showing up to josh's presentation last week i think that the presentation went very very well and was very engaging uh, i have gotten a little bit of feedback from you all that was good feedback about the uh, presentation so i'm very glad that josh made the time for us and i hope that you all enjoyed that thank you for the near perfect attendance um you know that is something the reason why i make those sync sessions and attending those sync sessions worth so many points is because yes these people put in a lot of time in order to uh prepare these uh presentations for you all and so yes i want them to have an audience so um i did get a complaint about my uh sync sessions costing uh or being worth too many points uh in my previous uh course announce uh course evaluations my course evaluations uh from fall 2021 but yeah there's a reason for that if i don't make them worth a lot of points then people may just feel free to skip them and when you have guest speakers and no audience that never looks good so i do hope you all understand why the uh why the sync sessions are a significant part of your grade your final grade for the class but also i just hope you all enjoy them because um there's nothing i feel that's more engaging than having an expert in the field just come in and talk to you about you know some things in a way that a professor can't there are things that i can do as a professor especially as a professor they actually did the work which not all professors have been librarians but i have uh but you know there is nothing like actually getting somebody from the field that can actually speak about something very very uh in depth that uh as far as the work that they've done okay so uh we've got that um also, the second piece that I need to mention for the uh, state of the course update is just uh, your first written assignments were due last weekend. So if you did not turn one in, you are going to be subject to a late penalty, but you need to go ahead and turn that in. And that was your visit to a cultural heritage site. Uh, the last thing that I want to say as far as course updates is concerned is that um, your discussion board posts are going very, very well. So just keep up the good work. I'm very, I'm really enjoying reading what you all do. And I just want you all to maintain that level of effort. And uh, I mean, it's, it's great. Uh, it's beautiful. I love it. Keep it up. All right. So with that said, let's talk uh, very briefly just about games uh, really quickly. So games are a form of intangible heritage uh in general now we've already talked about and you've seen uh probably also in uh some of your um some of your discussion board posts have touched on this as far as um things can there are things that can be uh more than that can be in more than one category so they can be intangible and tangible or they can be intangible and landscape or they can be landscape and tangible or whatever the case may be uh when i speak specifically about games um i am pretty much uh classifying games as intangible heritage uh because really it is generally the performance of the games and the gathering 
for the games that counts as the cultural heritage. So even if, uh, like, let's say you have, I'm just going to pick just a generic game out of nowhere. So let's say you're talking about chess, right? Um, I guess an argument can be made that, <laughs> I guess an argument can be made that chess is a, um, excuse me, uh, I had to tend to my dog really quickly. I, I guess the argument can be made that the, uh, the chess board and then the chess pieces could be forms of tangible heritage. I actually would not concede that because I think that chess is such a generic game that, uh, in such a worldwide game that doesn't really, um, I don't know. I, I think that whatever cultural heritage, specific cultural heritage that may have been tied to, uh, tangible chess pieces, I think that that's probably long since probably eroded because I think chess has just become that generalized and that mainstream. Um, however, I would say that the performance of chess in chess clubs or in international chess competitions still counts as intangible heritage. OK, so when I look at the uh, when I look at the games as a form of intangible heritage, one reason that I would say this is because whenever you go to different countries or even sometimes different regions within countries, uh, what you're going to find is that different uh different people may play different types of games in order to pass the time um and also not just to pass the time but also to entertain themselves or to get mental stimulation or to get physical stimulation or to have bonding experiences with their fellow human beings which i feel is what cultural heritage is all about so when you talk about uh like let's say that we were talking about um I don't know, here in the United States, and I'm, I apologize for being so U.S.-centered in how I'm doing this, but I've never actually lived outside of the United States, um, and I've never been outside of the United States, and my uh, ancestors have been in the United States since the beginning. So having said that, it's like, uh, um, and sorry for that pause, because I, I needed to also clarify something. Sorry for this tangent and this ramble, but when I say in the United States since the beginning. I mean, the beginning as in the founding of this country in 1776. I am not, um, to my knowledge, I am not of indigenous heritage. Uh, so I don't want to offend anyone who is indigenous by saying that my people have been here since the beginning. When I say the beginning, I don't mean the, I don't mean that my people were the original inhabitants of this land. I just mean that my, uh, since this actual country, the United States of America was founded, uh, yes, my ancestral lines are, were present here from at least 1776. So I do want to make that clarification, uh, so that I don't offend anyone. But anyway, getting back to, uh, this games angle. Um, I know what types of games are played a lot of times in the United States. And also this can vary by region. So where I'm from in North Carolina, you don't typically have little kids going out playing hockey, but you might have that in Alaska, in Minnesota, in some of these other Northern states. Um, and you even have, uh, collegiate teams in places like Alaska and Minnesota and Connecticut that have hockey teams. Whereas in North Carolina, I don't believe that to my knowledge, at least none of the division one schools in North Carolina have active hockey programs to my knowledge, um, ice hockey. And so when you look at that, there is a certain heritage that is tied to, you know, playing a game like hockey in a specific region of the United States, in northern states or in Alaska. But then also hockey is played in Europe. Hockey is played in Canada. And so there is heritage that is developed there, whereas what's more popular in North Carolina, where I'm from, um, is going to be football and basketball. Uh, foot college basketball is very, very popular in uh north carolina with unc duke and to a lesser extent with uh wake forest and nc state um and college football really isn't as big of a deal in north carolina as it is say in south carolina where i also used to live um with the college uh football programs at clemson and at the university of south carolina and then if you go even further south 
uh, high school and college football are huge deals in places like uh, especially Alabama. In Alabama, college football is life. You know what I'm saying? So um, these things, the reason that this can be a cultural heritage thing is because this isn't just universal and worldwide. You see these different nuances, even within the United States, you will see that different regions may gravitate to different sports more and uh, different types of games more. So, um, but these are ways, you know, when, when we talk about uh, the performance of these games, uh, th these things build culture because they build identity within communities. Um, if you've ever, if you haven't heard, and I like country music, y'all might think that because uh, people assume that because I'm black, I don't like country music, but I actually do. And there is this song called The Boys of Fall that is a very, uh, I really, really love that song. And it's about high school football, which even in North Carolina, where basketball is the predominant college sport, high school football is still very, very, it's still a very big deal in North Carolina and uh, especially in small town North Carolina. Um, but this builds identity, it builds camaraderie, it builds competition. Uh, when when Warren County High School plays Northern Vance High School or Southern Vance High School in North Carolina, um, you know, those are Warren County's rivals. And so Warren County will, uh, you know, that's when we come together. We come together because we want to we want to bring pride into our community by winning that football game against our neighbor, our neighboring rivals. So um, this is, again, this is how we build identity. It's how we build pride in our communities or one of the ways, one of the many ways that we build pride in our communities. And that leads to actual heritage and heritage appreciation. And you don't have to be limited to sports. Uh, again, I mentioned chess earlier, um, but there are different types of um, there are different types of games other than athletic sports that you can engage in that are still things that, you know, build heritage and build pride in uh, communities and things of that nature. And so, um, yeah, sorry, if I were to try to take the focus off of actual athletic sports, another thing that we could look at, and this may deal more with uh, more with ethnicity than it does with with um. <laughs> region uh whereas those uh those sports games i was talking about i was talking a lot about regional focus but when you talk about ethnicity um one thing that you will see when it comes to performance of playing games and that sort of thing is there are different games that are more popular within or more closely tied to uh certain cultures within the united states for example uh me being uh black black americans spades the card game spades is very popular with black americans and so you could um you'll you'll see like i you know uh and i'm sure that the black students in the class can back me up on this uh we take pride in being able to play spades well in our community um and so and that's something that people will even gather around to watch like family reunions and different other types of events that black people take part of in this country we will gather around, we will play spades, uh, we will play spades for hours, people will watch their friends and family play spades, uh, they will comment on the bad decisions that people make when playing spades in our community. And so that performance of playing spades, that is again, uh, intangible cultural heritage. We are uh, the, uh, the playing of spades in the black community is something that we do not just to pass the time and not just to entertain ourselves, but it is actually something we do as a form of cultural expression. It's something that we do as a form of cultural bonding. It's something that because so because space is so pervasive in the black American community, um, you know, when it's time to play space, people will gather and they will celebrate the playing of the good playing of space as a way of culture of, you know, demonstrating cultural expression and cultural appreciation. And the same is probably true with a lot of other different types of games um, within different uh, communities within the United States. Uh, I'm not Italian and I don't know that many Italian Americans, but my understanding at least is that uh, within the Italian American community, playing bocce is a big deal and it's something that is uh, very 
you know, it's celebrated among Italian Americans uh, playing the game of bocce. Um, when it comes to, I think, Mexican Americans, a lot of times, I don't know if this would be considered an actual game, but um, there are, excuse me, there are um, heritage implications surrounding, in the Mexican American community, there are heritage um, implications surrounding the, um, you know, the breaking of pinatas and that sort of thing. And so when we look at all of these things, they, again, those are things that people can take pride in. Those are things that people can identify culturally with other people uh, within their culture um, by participating in those types of intangible heritage and or even just observing or being around other people participating in those types of intangible heritage. So uh, games, there's a lot to be said about games. And part of the reason I'm kind of rambling and my uh, thoughts are a little disjointed is because there's so much to say, but so little time that I'm going to take this back to um, I'm going to take it back to uh, athletic performance. And I'm going to say that we did just have two um, two very big deals in uh, cultural heritage related to games that uh, one just happened and one is still happening. So when you talk about the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl, yes, is part of American cultural heritage, whether you want to uh, acknowledge that or not, because, uh, again, the game of football is a uh, it's it's a game that has a long standing, very American tradition. And when you talk about football, you are talking and when you're talking about the Super Bowl specifically, you are talking about these men who have uh, they probably most of them played this game almost their entire lives uh, and they went through levels. They went through high school, college and then the pros. And now they are in this game where the best of the best are competing in the whole United States pretty much is watching, you know, just to see who ends up on top. And so this is something that these guys who play in the Super Bowl, they've been preparing for this their entire lives. Um, and it is the culmination of all of that hard work. And then when you talk about the Olympics, and I am going to keep this under 20 minutes, so I am going to wrap up. But when you talk about the Olympics, um, we have the, the Winter Olympics going on right now. And the Winter Olympics are, uh, the Olympics in general, winter or summer, they are games where people of all types of cultures all around the world, people of all cultures, all languages, um, come together and they, they don't allow those barriers, those language barriers and those cultural barriers and all of those things. They don't allow those things to prevent them from participating in the Olympic Games. They come together and they play in the Olympic Games. And it is a form of cultural heritage uh, to have all of, you know, all of the world pretty much come together to um, at the very least watch, if not participate in the Olympic Games and see these athletes perform. And so uh, one thing that I'll say uh, before I close is that uh, the drawback to that is uh, what you don't want to see happen. But what does happen, unfortunately, with the Olympics is that uh, politics does mar the cultural heritage. And you'll see that time and time again with all types of forms of cultural heritage. You will see how politics damages cultural heritage, whether it comes from uh, politics allowing for development of, uh, you know, industrial property or residential property over cultural heritage sites or uh, politics leading um, terror groups or invading armies to destroy cultural heritage properties. Well, we also see politics interrupt cultural heritage within the Olympics. Uh, you see that there are implications with Russia and with China and with the United States and how there is there is a little bit of tension there and things aren't going as smoothly as they probably should. Um, and we are not just celebrating uh, our ability to come together and play these games despite speaking different languages and living in all different parts of the world. We should just be coming together and playing these games and acknowledging that unifying and playing these games together uh, is a way of expressing cultural heritage and a way of, you know, fellowshipping and rejoicing with our fellow human beings uh, even when we have access barriers, because at the end of the day, what matters is that we can all understand the games enough to play them together. But unfortunately, those things are being colored 
by the um by the politics surrounding the olympics but i'm going to leave it right there and i am going to say with that i am dr jsp and grace and i'll see you next week thank you